Hello, this is Tola from Trifold Productions with another Blendy Quickie for Beginners. And this is the third part. I was going to make it the three-part series, but it's actually going to be a four-part series of building a, ho a home using the free add-on uh, building tool. Now, in the first uh, part of it, we built the first part of the home, which is this. Let me turn on my screencast keys. Uh, make sure they work properly. And they do. And in the second part, we modeled the middle part here. And the reason why I'm going to make it a four-part series is because in the fourth part, we're going to uh, do some touch-up to the building, to our model, and also texture it. So I don't want this third part to be so long, so I'm dividing it into two, which makes it have a, a fourth part. But uh, let's start modeling this part of the building. And I've uh, been messing around with the building tool and come up with some new techniques to actually help with the build process a little bit make it a little bit faster but let's just uh, select our building here and our roof and let's slide it over <coughs> excuse me let me zoom in uh, now we're going to model this third uh, wing of the building so we're going to go to our building tools click on create floor and as you can see the front of it is wider than, than the side and I've already had my notes set aside so I can remember have a reference to look at so the third building is going to be 6 by 4 so here before we go into edit mode let's adjust our dimensions let's expand that so our width is going to be 6 is that the right? yeah 6 enter and then by four so that it looks good. So let's go into edit mode by pressing tab on our keyboard. <coughs> Make sure we're in face select. And let's left click on our floor plan here and click on add floors. And this has a slab on it, but I think it's just part of the slab for the whole base of the building. So we're going to delete the slab for our model. Click on that, click on that add slab part, click off of that. And we're going to make the height. Let's see what our, what our height is. You see, the floor height is 3. Okay. So, floor height, type in 3. And that looks good. The width and the length. Let's minimize that. So, let's add our windows. Let's click on that. And add a window. And we have two windows at the bottom and they're smaller windows and they're basic looking windows with one horizontal bar going across let's go to our reference dimensions let's reference our dimensions here and our window size on the y-axis is 1.5 for that uh, length so one let's click on that 1.5 enter we have two windows, so let's click on the count, making it two. And the distance between the two windows looks fine. And we want to add a fill type, which is the bar. And remember, only horizontal, but no vertical. So on the vertical bars, let's click on that arrow to make it zero. And the thickness of the bars, that looks fine also. And that looks good. We want windows for the side here. But from our reference image, we have one big window with one, it seems to be like one bar going down the middle. So we're going to left click on that, click on add window, and our window count, make it one. And let's look at, let's see if I've referenced, if I've written down the uh, dimensions of that window. You see, I think I just uh, made, we can make that window on this side. We can make it, let me see, on the x-axis, let's make it, let's type in 2, see how that looks. That looks good. <coughs> and on the y-axis, because um, it is kind of long, let's type in 2.5, let's see how that looks, 2.5, enter. And that might be a little bit too tall. So let's, the shape 
the dimensions look fun <coughs> look fun they just have to be a little bit smaller so let's make this let's decrease everything by 0.5 so on the x, y axis, x axis make it 1.5 enter y axis 2 enter and that looks good and let's put a bar in the middle no horizontal bar just a vertical bar so on the horizontal bar let's uh, left click or click on the left arrow to make a zero on the vertical bars let's click on the right arrow to make it one and we have that there uh, looks a little bit too narrow to me so let's increase it on the x-axis by 0.5 which makes this two and that looks better the, that's the right kind of width now if you remember on the last the uh, second part of our tutorial we used a uh, we wanted to add another uh, set of floors and windows to the top floor it couldn't do it because it needs to calculate or see the bottom floor and the top floor as being the same in order to add a window for some reason I've already, with the guys I've been able to get past that so what we're going to do is let's left click on that we're going to click on add floors and we're going to reduce the dimensions of the height of this floor and the floor height let's type in let's say 0.1 enter and then we're going to left click on that again add floors and we're going to make the floor height let's look look see what this looks like the floor height of this let's make it let's make it three type in three enter it could be a little bit too tall let's type in 2.5 instead the floor height 2.5 enter and left click on that and then add window and I can see it adds the window because it's calculating the uh, the dimension so to speak of this floor with this small floor we just added so that eliminates us having to uh, actually use a boolean tool to put in the window ourselves or to just have an error there so that eliminates the error and now this has two windows looks like it has a horizontal bar and a vertical bar so let's type in two for the count and let's make these um, smaller or shorter on the y-axis so we're gonna click in there and type in one 0.5 enter that looks good and let's get in a vertical bar and put that in now for our side window over here it's the same as the bottom one which is just a vertical bar so left click on that add a window put the count down to one and we're going to have to match kind of the same dimensions as the one at the bottom so to speak let me see actually doesn't look like it's the same as one as, as the one on the bottom so we're just going to keep it the way it is and put in just a vertical bar but no horizontal bar so on the vertical bar we'll left click on that left arrow and we have our window simulated there now on the top one this may be we'll have to probably use the boolean tool because we want this is slanted this is slanted and I've tried to pretty much come in and do, use that same technique of adding a small floor then the, window, the, the next floor on top and adding windows like that but because the roof is slanted it's going to look kind of messy if we um, try to slant the roof with all the vertices that it will that will be created from having windows put in there so we're going to left click on that and we're going to click on add floors and that looks uh, looks pretty much good. <coughs> Excuse me. Next thing we're going to want to do is that we're going to slant this to match this. So I'm going to let me see. Press one on my keyboard. <coughs> Get some water here. Alright, we're going to slant our, our roof now. <coughs> Press 1 on your keyboard to go into front view. And in edit mode, we're going to go into vertex select. 
and we're going to go into x-ray mode by clicking on this icon here so we can see through or select through our mesh let's press one again and then C left click there right click to confirm that selection we're just going to drag this down just to match that and that looks good so we're going to now create this window in front and the one on the side is not going to be that hard to create let's press one again on our keyboard let's get out of x-ray mode and get out of edit mode by pressing tab and we're going to change our viewport shading view so we can see the details in our building so let's left click on this icon the far right circle left click on that okay you can kind of see let's get our sun to go let's pull our sun over so we can see the shadows here let's pull this up zoom in we can kind of see it a little bit better let's change the color of our building so we still can't see we want to be able to look at it from uh, just straight on and not have to tilt it because we want to create the same dimensions of our windows to fit what's here top and bottom so we're going to add uh, texture to this like we did the last time and use nodes yes and let's click let's choose a color blue is good so we can see our windows here very well and let's click on file and save that's a uh, important reminder and now we're going to do shift a then mesh plane and we're going to let's tilt our view here middle mouse button minimize this and drag left click and drag on the y-axis press one again on our keyboard I'm gonna pull this up left click and drag on the z-axis then RX 90 and we're going to go into that transparent view mode <coughs> excuse me and we're going to stretch out our cube so that it's uh, matches the dimensions of these two windows in terms of length so we're going to SZ on the uh, z-axis to scale on the z-axis drag this down scale up a little bit more on the z-axis and that's good, it doesn't have to be exact but that's good and we're going to scale it on the x-axis so SX and then drag your mouse out and that works Let's see, let's see, let's pull in a little bit more so it's a little bit closer to the building so we can get the exact measurements here. That still looks good. And we're going to go into X, into X-ray mode there. And the next thing we're going to do is that we want to match the slant of our two windows up here. So we're going to hold down shift, we're going to just pivot with our uh, left click and drag on that hand icon to uh, pan around and tab in edit mode and then click A to deselect our mesh and then C and left click and then we're going to drag this down this is kind of really let's zoom in uh, so we can see this better this is really small so let's pull this down a little bit more and that looks pretty good okay and now we're going to um, create a loop cut here to divide the window in two. So we're going to press Control R on our keyboard. And when that ye yellow line comes up, scroll up on your mouse wheel to split into two. Uh, two selections that are two yellow lines. Left click and then press S, X on your keyboard to p and then drag your mouse in a little bit. We want to simulate. Oh. Yeah, sometimes this happens in Blender. So we're just going to pull in as far as we can without it, it intersecting in and on itself. And it seems to be right around there somewhat. Let me see, drag, drag in as far as you can and left click and just confirm that selection. And now we're going to go into vertex select A to deselect everything C on our keyboard. Left click that and pull this down so it can be somewhat parallel or somewhat diagonal to the, the next vertice and that looks good 
So we've got that done. And to be on the safe side, what we're going to do now is that we're going to get out of uh, 3D or the X wireframe mode by clicking on that or clicking on the next shader over. And we're going to go into face select mode. We're going to click on this, this middle one. This is the center of our um, uh, the connection that connects this window to this one. We're going to delete that. Delete on our keyboard and delete faces. Go get out of edit mode pressing tab and we're going to actually let's go back in edit mode because we're going to separate these two just, just to be on the safe side because sometimes when you use the boolean tool and you have like a mesh like this that's separated sometimes it confuses the tool and you get some like really kind of strange results. So we're going to have to separate these, this mesh into two parts. So let's left click on that and then P on our keyboard and selection that divides that up. So that's one part and that's one part, ooh, one part there. So this is two parts, this is two different meshes. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make this thicker. Thicker, the better, that way you can get good results. So tab in edit mode, left click on that mesh. E to extrude, left click, and then drag this out on the Y axis. Do the same with this, tab out, left click on, uh, let's get out of x-ray view. Left click on that, tab it edit mode, left click again, E to extrude, left click to, to confirm that selection and drag this out also. And let's try to make it the same kind of width, just so that we can get the same kind of results. Uh, in terms of the depth of the window, so let's drag this in a little bit, drag this out a little bit more to make it thicker. Tab out, left click on that tab, and drag this out also, and that looks good. So now we're going to use uh, these cutouts, so to speak, to cut holes uh, to simulate the windows in our reference image. So let's left click on this. Left click on that, select both of them, and drag them up. And we're going to go back into uh, EV, viewport shading. And we're going to pretty much leave this, leave these uh, shapes where they are in terms of their position. And I'm going to left click on that one. And I'll have to remember the hierarchy, so to speak. Because I think, if I remember correctly, using the Boolean tool, the building, what is going to be used as the cutter, actually the building should be what should be selected for the Boolean tool, <coughs> excuse me, and then the shape should be, you know, what should be used as the cutter, so to speak. Let's click on our uh, wrench tool here. Let's left click on our building, add modifier, let me see, Boolean. Let's click on that. Let's left click on our eyedropper and choose that. And we're going to pull this in. And we're going to click on, leave it at the default setting of difference and click on apply. Let me see if that did it properly. Oh, and it did. Okay. Oh, that's that's uh, helpful. And we're going to do the same thing with uh, this shape here. And even if you do end up cutting in a little bit too deep, it's not a big deal. You, just can, you can just select this face here in edit mode and pull this out a little bit so that it pretty much has the same depth as the other windows. It's not really a big deal. Let's left click on that. Left click on our building first. Let's left click on our shape cutter first and pull that in. And then left click on our building. Add modifier. Scroll up. Uh, Boolean tool, click on our eyedropper, click on our cutter, and click apply, and hopefully it did it, and it did, alright, that's, that's, uh, I know I sound kind of surprised, but sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, so, when it does work, you just gotta, you know, show some kind of appreciation for it working, so we have our windows there, and, let me see, it's, this one's kind of too far in, so let's click on our building, Going to edit mode and it's in face select. Let's left click on that part 
and let's pull this out a little bit left click on that uh, cut out and pull it out also a little bit okay that's good and now the next thing we want to do is we want to cut out the shape let me see is this the right thing oh yeah okay just to be on the safe side let's do our roof first we don't want a situation where we do a cutout here and intersect to the roof and we have issues with the roof in terms of creating the roof so let's tab make sure we're in face select let's left click on that and press shift D duplicate that plane pull this up on the Z axis and we're going to scale it up by pressing S on our keyboard let me see scale it up a little bit more we want the edge of the roof to overlap the sides of the building so tab and edit mode left click on that Are we in, we still in edit? oh yeah we're, we're already in edit mode okay then let's press E to extrude this and drag it up on Z axis and left click and then we have our building let me see uh, let's separate the, the, the roof from the rest of the building so press control on your keyboard P to select left click now separate I just did that just for the sake of convenience because sometimes it's an issue sometimes if you're going really deep into a project and you do everything in edit mode in your mind you're thinking it's separate but it's not and you end up moving it around it ends up ends up messing up your whole model which you don't want so let's press one on our keyboard G Z and drag it down so it's, it's just flush with the rest of the building and the next thing we want to do is cut out the frame for uh, this uh, this part and we can we can use this let's use this just use this same piece of uh, same piece of mesh we use for the uh, front building or the front window tab it into edit mode go into uh, vertex select grouped vertex select uh, choosing I guess let's go into x-ray mode so we can select the whole thing from front to back and then press C on your keyboard left click left click enter and to make this flat let's press SX0 last night it, or SY0 is that it? nope SZ0 okay that's it sometimes it's just kinda confusing in terms of like where which one you're supposed to press to get the right results so SZ0 to make this flat I'm going to pull this up on the z-axis let's go out of edit mode and we're going to pull this around and we have to get our our mesh uh, centered in the middle of our, uh, our 3d cursor here our, our, our move gizmo and the fast way to do that is go into edit mode press A, A twice and just just eyeball it that's the best way to do it it doesn't have to be centered so to speak uh, perfectly but just so that can, you can see the um, the uh, pivot point right in the middle somewhat to get out of that so they're going to press S Z 90 oh sorry R Z 90 oh what happened to our cube yeah that one got messed up I don't know how that happened let's press let's just delete that and just start from scratch sometimes that happens in 3d animation 3d modeling you just have issues where things start moving that aren't supposed to move but just have to have patience and keep pressing on so shift a mesh and we're going to just choose a cube and it's at the bottom here inside of the building we're going to go to uh, top view by pressing 7. We want to make this as flat as possible. So S, Y, and just pull in your mouse to make it flat. And then R, Z, 90. If you want it to go on the side of the building, press 1. And just pivot around. And we want to kind of scale it to fit the dimensions of this uh, of this window let's just move our building out so we can just see so we're going to hold down shift with our cubes like to hold down shift left click and left click and just pull this out 
pull this out. And then control three on our keyboard. So you can see it from this side. I'm gonna click on our cube. I'm gonna pull this down. We want because we want this, we want our cube, as you can see from our reference image. This window is the same length. It's not the same height, but the same length as this window. This one's shorter than this one. This one is one we're trying to create, but it's shorter, but it's the same length. That's what we want to simulate with our cube here. Let's pull this up. Go into a wireframe mode. And let's scroll in, hold down shift, and our middle mouse button. And we're going to scale it on the Z-axis, SZ. Pull this down. Pull it up a little bit. And it looks good. Remember, we want it to be a little bit shorter, so scale it a little bit smaller, shorter, or in height. Okay. Then let's get out of wireframe mode and get out of that uh, x ray mode also. Let's pull this up. Let's go into our EV settings so we can see the shadows. Let's control 3 again. And it's this, this, the right dimension. Remember, we want our length, our, our uh, depth of our cutter to be deep enough to go into the building. So S, X, and drag out. Okay, let's pull our cutter. This one, I'm going to call it the cutter close to our building so we can see what it's going to do in terms of it being far enough into the window. Okay. So let's choose our window, add modifier. Scroll up, Boolean, click on our eyedropper, left click on our building, keep all the settings the same and click on apply and that should give us our window. Ooh, that didn't do it. Didn't have it close enough. So let's make sure that our cube is within our building model. That process again, left click on our building, building add modifier, scroll up, Boolean tool, Click on our eyedropper, left click on our cutter, and apply. Okay, let's see. And there it is. And once again, file, save. And let's get rid of our cutters. So we want to delete that one. Press delete on our keyboard. Let's click on our building again. And we're going to go into edit mode and then face select left click in, inside of our face then we're going to pull that out because we want it to be we don't we don't want the window, window to be that far in because we want it to match the depth of the window at the bottom let's click and drag that out okay and now we're going to create our um, this has a vertical and a horizontal bar so we're going to let me see let's just click on this this window window for the vertical bar left click on that Control L, select that whole thing. Shift D, now I'll duplicate it and just drag this up. Just gonna press Control 3 to look at it from the side angle. And that's in there, we want this crossbar to be in there. So Shift D again, rotate on, let me see, X axis 90. And we're going to scale it on the Y axis by pressing S, Y, and then drag up on our mouse. And since this is higher up, we're going to pull this up on the Z axis. And that looks good. We're going to do the same thing with our front windows because as you can see from the front windows, the ones at the top, the ones that we just created have those vertical bars. So press 1 on your keyboard. I'm going to left click here on that face there. Press Control L. So it selects the whole bar and then shift D left click to confirm that selection and drag that up. Same thing with this left click, control L, shift D, drag it up on the Z axis. And we have that. Let's get out of edit mode so we can make sure we have the. Okay, that looks good. And now you can see the frames are there. So we can also create the frames. Go into edit mode. Make sure we're still in face select. Let's left click in there. Hold down shift. Left click. Hold down shift. Left click. Hold down shift. And left click. And then E to extrude and scale. And drag your mouse in. 
and that's our our frame and same thing with this window left click in here left click hold down shift as you left click shift oh left click sorry left click front view eat extrude s to scale it in a little bit and that's that's it yeah let's get up edit mode how that looks and that looks pretty good and once we're gonna have these these uh beams here and we can simulate or recreate and let's just take the beams we've already created from here left click on that shift D to duplicate it seven from the top view let's pull this out drag it over and just eyeball it one again into the front view I think all these beams are all the same all yeah, they're all the same width and height and depth and stuff like that so we're going to eyeball this and pull this down and just position it where that one is okay let's look at it from the side just hold on your middle mouse button and just pivot around with your mouse and pull this in and then one again so we can see how that looks and that looks pretty good let's pull it down a little bit more so it doesn't intersect with the top of the of our roof there I'm going to duplicate that two more times and pull it over shift D drag this over and kind of eyeball it to get it in the middle pull this up and then shift D again eyeball it and pull this up okay and that looks good I know I said we were going to model I don't even I forget what this is called to model this up I guess it's like some kind of uh, um, decorative uh, framework for the outer part of the entrance of the home but what we're going to do in the fourth part is do a lot of cleanup for all these three models position them and then we're going to make our decorative outer part which is this and the stairs and then we're going to texture it and that's pretty much going to be it for modeling a home, a luxury home, using the build tool. Let's delete our cutting tool there. So I'm going to press, choose that and press delete. So yeah, that's um, today's Blender quick tip. So as I said before, in the fourth part, we're going to model the uh, outer, outer decorative part and the stairs and texture the whole thing and do these pillars. And remember what I mentioned prior in the first part is that this is, we're going to use this to simulate just a shot of panning into the building or zooming into the building so we don't have to be architect architecturally correct with what we're doing it's just staging this whole thing to make it look like we're going to enter into a building from the front part so that's uh, the third part of the um, use of the building tool in terms of building a luxury, luxury home and once again thank you guys who have subscribed in the past and those of you who are subscribing now, I really appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys on the fourth and last part of this very, very long tutorial. Or I'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Adios.